<laughs> we did the big golf outing. The following day, I'm flying back to Metro Airport, Detroit. And, and even though I'm in Dallas, Texas, I, I bought a USA Today. We had, and I don't always buy this particular paper, but I was flying on Northwest. Anybody ever try to fly Northwest Airlines? You know, there were three people out there just kick-starting a turbo, trying to get one motor running. <laughs> there was one guy, wasn't trying to hide, he was gluing something, wasn't hiding, and had super glue, was gluing something on the side of the airplane, turned to his friend and goes, you think that'll hold, Larry? <laughs> so I'm whipping through the newspaper, and I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in the bar. Every airport in the world has a little bitty bar. I'm in that little bitty bar for one reason, I don't like to fly. I have to fly. It's part of my livelihood. I travel all over the country. I, I travel internationally. I have to fly, but I don't like to. So I have a couple drinks. I don't think there's anything wrong with an adult having a couple adult beverages before they get on an airplane. Now, and now it's a little early. It's, it's 10 to 5 in the morning. It's a little early. <laughs> but I was drinking Bloody Marys. Now, anybody that drinks knows you can drink a good Bloody Mary in the morning because they got celery and they're healthy. All right? <laughs> So I had six of them suckers, and uh, well, the service was real quick. It was five o'clock in the morning. Wasn't anybody down there drinking, except for me and the pilot, you know. And uh, well, he's not afraid of flying. He's a pilot. He's he's afraid of crashing. So we're we're whipping him back. And, so I had six Bloody Marys, and I had taken a Percodan and a Tylenol four. <laughs> couple of Viking and ES so my back wouldn't tighten up on me. I want to have enough chemicals in my body that if God forbid something happens to my airplane, I can still just walk out. <laughs> Another thing, if you fly a lot like I do, here's a tip, get, get to the airport early enough to get what's called an exit row seat. An exit row seat. People, you get two things in an exit row seat, you get no place else on the entire aircraft. Number one, you get more leg room. That's very comfortable. It's very relaxing. You have that extra. And number two, you get a damn door. <laughs> and people, trust me, doors come in handy if shit goes bad on an airplane, buddy. I walk by first class and there's a guy like a little bit bitchy. He's like, oh, oh you're in, I'm in first class. And I have a glass glass. Yours is plastic. I go, yeah, but your glass glass will be up your ass. I'll be outside. I don't care that. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm whipping through the newspaper, and I come across a whole page of stupid stuff from last year. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen the USA Today. They break, they got a whole page of stupid stuff from around the states. You know what I'm talking about? So even though I'm in Texas, I zoom in on Michigan. I don't know if you read this. There was a gentleman in Detroit having an asthma attack in the middle of the night. He reached under his pillow to pull out his asthma inhaler thingy, but because he was in Detroit, he pulled out a 38 caliber handgun. Did you see that? Now, personally, I don't know how much asthma crap weighs. I exactly. But I'm thinking, even half asleep, I'd know if it was my handgun. You know? And I'm sure they make a different noise. <laughs> this guy shot himself in the face. Now, he didn't kill himself. You know, his, his nose is clear. You know, it's, uh, it's clear into the neighbor's backyard. That's how clear his nose is. And another one I read, it was up by Claire, Michigan, up by the middle part of my state right here. Now, now this is the reason I never moved out of Michigan. You know, I, I, every comedian, almost everybody in our state uses this. It's, you know, it's, it's a good map and it's a good friend and it travels, you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't listen to them. Okay, but anyhow. What right about Claire, Michigan said a farmer named Glenn, now I didn't give his last name, just said a farmer named Glenn was sighted in his deer rifle. Now, it's important you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that there was no G on the word. The man was not sighting. He was sighting. <laughs> Apparently, he wasn't actually hunting. He was hunting. There's a difference between hunting and hunting. I think the difference is the amount of Jack Daniels that's in the truck with the fucking high bar rifle. But it said he was sighting in his deer rifle, and he mistook his mother-in-law. <laughs> She was hanging laundry. Now, shit, deer don't even do laundry. Okay, if you think of it. But it said he got a bad case of buck fever. Now, I'm not sure medically what buck fever is, but I'm thinking it must have been like a really bad yeast infection for men. Because apparently, while he was a scratching, he shot her. Now, again, he didn't kill her. I don't want to make this morbid tonight. He didn't kill her. But what scared me, this guy, Glenn, shot this nice lady twice. <laughs> No, I don't hunt very much, but I'm thinking if you get a deer in the crosshairs of your rifle and you're thinking, I got one. <laughs> She's doing laundry. <laughs> you know, guys, if you squeeze off that first round, if your deer goes anything at all like this, ow, shit, ow! 
Don't shoot her again. In fact, if your deer is speaking English at any time during the hunt, 